With so many live service games vying for your attention, uh -huh. the first Descendant feels like it was focus group tested to please as many people as possible, and it's faded for mediocrity as a result. This Damn. unabashedly derivative shooter borrows tired ideas from better games, covers them in a thick layer of freedom. Okay, now if that doesn't sound like somebody who's coming into this review with a biased agenda, I don't know what does. This clearly sounds like a Redditor who is angry posting about a new game. That sounds so unhinged for journalists, for review material. You lose me as soon as you open with that line. Play annoyances, then pads the whole thing out with mind-numbingly repetitive missions just in case you were still managing to have fun. That's but let, let's let him cook. Because underneath all that cheap wood and crumbling drywall is a really strong foundation with entertaining gunplay and charismatic characters. I'd like to get to know okay. better. The first descendant My dick is doesn't by know no where to go with the this first one. live service game to come out of the oven half baked. So there's always a chance updates will make it more palatable in the months and years to come. But True. it's off to an underwhelming start. Oh, how the weak. Bro, let's talk about him using a controller. Is this like. No, never mind. Sorry, console players. I'll continue. Don't worry about it. Developer Nexon's take on a multiplayer third-person shooter plays in some of the same spaces as Genshin Impact, complete with cool-looking characters to unlock and countless currencies and materials to grab. Genshin Impact without the Gamba part of it. I like that a fact that I can buy a character if I want to just buy the character instead of rolling, um, uh, spending a thousand dollars for a for a character. Grind for all of which can be bypassed if you're willing to simply cough up your hard-earned cash. And like some of its polished contemporaries, there's a pretty decent game here in spite of a UI that requires a PhD in RPG hogwash wash to decipher and an irritating. Wait. Is he shit talking the UI? Wait, what? Monetization mod. Wait, this UI is one of the best UIs ever, dude. You can't get any more clean than this. Hello? Are we playing the same game here? This UI is so intuitive, so nice looking. It's crazy. Look at this. You need a PhD for this? Well, he's a console player. It doesn't surprise me. But do you need a PhD for this UI? Hello? Okay, let's let's continue, chat. Let's continue with this review. It's already we already starting really bad. Running around with friends while shooting enemies and unleashing interesting supernatural abilities upon alien armies is an undeniably good time. And the deep RPG mechanics and loot systems are a spreadsheet loving nerd's dream. It's also a fairly pretty game that feels a lot more premium Very than pretty. one might expect, yeah. even with the occasional frame rate dip or crash. That said, its monetization model is every bit as eyebrow raising as it sounds. The story and dialogue is laughably bad, and much of the campaign yeah. is packed with filler that can be a real snooze. I can't really camp I can't really say anything, comment towards the campaign and story. I don't really play games for their story. I know that I'm missing a big chunk of what makes gamers really happy. I don't play games for a story. If I wanted a good story, I would open up a Dr. Seuss book and read. If I wanted a good acting, I would pick up uh, a movie and watch a really good movie, you know? But again, I can't really comment on this. I do wish that some of the voice lines were better and better delivered as I did enjoy the cutscenes themselves. I don't really care about what's happening in the story. In fact, I don't really know what's going on in the story, but the way they're presented are at least is very good looking. I love running through the campaign and a tip for anybody watching this. If you're going to play this game based off of my opinion, play with the ultimate descendant bunny skin and every cutscene shows her taint every time. 10 out of 10 cutscenes with bunny. 
I've spent the vast majority of my 120 hours of playtime dashing around small hub areas, completing repetitive chores in between much more substantial missions and boss battles against robotic kaiju. Those self-contained missions and bosses are exactly Kailu? the kind of thing I hope for in an action-packed cooperative game. Ah. Some seriously awesome combat, interesting enemies to take down, and a loot system that had me regularly trying out the latest shiny weapon I pulled from some schmuck's corpse. That said, even these more enjoyable bits weren't without major irritations. Oh god, I like how hate nearly every boss has I hate these ball mechanics. that have to be peeled off before they can be damaged, most of which respawn multiple times or heal if you take too long to remove them. A few even have shields on top of their shields, so you're constantly stopping what you're doing to shoot a tiny target like and remove a protective a boss barrier, that has these, only to find yourself staring a at a- A boss that has these ball mechanics is good. One boss, not 20 of the bosses. It just becomes annoying and I don't like it. One of them is okay, you know, two maybe, like 20 of these bosses having these ball mechanics? Another one, seconds no, later. No, thank you. But those are still bright spots compared to the much more numerous missions you're expected to do in between every story beat, which have you grapple hooking across open world areas to complete intensely monotonous errands. These include a little mini game where you have to collect items from fallen enemies and deposit them into a collection bin, an escort quest where you have to follow a drone around an area slowly while fighting small waves of baddies, the missions and several are, variations. The missions are very repetitive. They are non-exciting. Going through the campaign definitely feels very uneventful, for sure. I'll give him that. Like, having to follow this drone like 20,000 times through the campaign sucks. It's just, it's a new area, same stuff. And, yeah, I don't, I don't really like it myself. Yeah, especially on top of the world, feeling, feeling dead as hell. Uh, yeah. I agree. Missions where you're just standing in a circle as you keep it clear of foes. Not only do most of these involve a whole lot of waiting around for enemies to spawn, but you'll replay them in every new area until they are both tiresome and woefully predictable. There are so many missions like these, and it adds hours upon hours to a roughly 30 hour campaign that would probably be a quarter as long if they just went straight to the stuff that's actually worth playing. But yeah, that is a good um, a th a take, but uh, that is looter shooter stuff. To be honest with you, this is a gaming problem in general. You know, when you're playing a new MMO, it's only fetch quest. And it's fetch, fetch quest in every new area, right? So in MMOs, RPGs, shooters, it's the same monotonous. Doesn't make it okay for a new game to come out and give you the same dose that other, other games um do but yeah it's not exclusive to this game it's a problem in every game now Even if you can forgive the often trite missions, the story itself is consistently a waste of time and absolutely not worth paying attention to. No absolutely story is worth paying attention to. Sci-fi babble. No like offense, nerds. Walls, no video game has good story. Unleashing RK. It's one of the sillier stories I've seen in a while, and I play Destiny. Most of the dialogue is absolutely atrocious. At one point, I burst out laughing when a guy said this. Kickoff will engulf increase. The roars of the Vulcus will fill this land with fear. And they keep making you talk to this annoying little brat. It's truly heinous stuff. I'd watch what you're saying, Glay. I carried out I my hate side Jeremy. of the operation perfectly. Thankfully, the most interesting characters are those you can unlock and play as. That includes the unflappable electric speedster Bunny, who is my personal favorite, and the sarcastic and smarmy grenade-chucking soldier Lepic. Some of the cast do still seem a bit shallow, largely because you only get a little backstory and character development for most of them. But hearing them cheer as you blast monsters to bits and seeing their charming animations, which clearly had more effort put into Dude, them. Dude, the game's characters are really good design, though. You can't shit talk the the presentation of these characters. They're really all of them look unique. 
as hell. It, it, I want to get to play every character. They, the way they are showing, off, showing them off in this Descendant screen, selecting screen, they look really nice. And then those of the NPCs is quite I haven't not played all of them, but all of the ones that I have unlocked so far, all of them feel extremely unique to one another. Like it feels like a like a complete unique class so far what I played. And that's really nice. Nice. Only one of these playable characters has an actual quest line associated with them right now, with more planned for the future. But that story is one of the better threads currently available, so here's hoping they're quick to add more on that front. Oh, my beloved daughter, Daya. Hold on a little longer. Your mom will save you no matter what. Actually learning to play as them is great too. One character might control the battlefield with explosive uh. AOE attacks, while another covers enemies in devastating ice-based debuffs. Bunny does insane DPS by running around as much as possible to generate electrical energy, then unleashes it in powerful blasts. Since each of these characters Yo, has their own style of great, play, dude. switching between them offers a markedly different experience. Like how Ajax, a heavy tank with protective abilities, is all about standing your ground instead. Most games games with playable characters as its main chase live or die by how compelling those unlockable avatars are and the first descendant I is play loaded this class. with distinctive options that are alluring to obtain Unfortunately, aside from the first couple characters you unlock in the opening hours, the process of accessing the rest is dreadfully painful unless you're willing to open your pocketbook. In the name of science, I decided to I don't, I don't know if this is true, but let, let's let him cook for a little bit. Really dial in and see how much effort it would take to unlock one specific character from start to finish without spending any real money. After 10 hours of repetitive grinding for the required materials, a whopping eight of which was spent replaying a single mission, trying to get one specific key item to drop, and then 20 more hours of waiting for arbitrary time gates to pass. The yeah, this is annoying. The timer for stuff to be done cooking is annoying. You could get really high number uh, hours waiting. It's annoying as hell. I don't think it should be that long. I don't think nothing should exceed one hour, to be honest. And one hour is me being very generous. I don't think nothing should exceed one hour. Experience had nearly broken me. I've got to admit, when the alternative to all of this mindless, soul-destroying grinding and time gating is to simply pay $10, it becomes a pretty appealing proposition to cough up the dough. And that's the problem. Nexon has intentionally propped up obtuse, overly grindy systems that feel terrible, seemingly just to make it more enticing to pay money. And when there are already paid seasons... Achievement unlocked. <laughs> Actually, I think the, the drop rate in this game, like I was speaking earlier, comparatively to other grindy games that I played, this is the most generous. This is not even that bad of a grind. And that is the game though, right? The category of this game is the grind. It is grinding for the next weapon, grinding for the next character, grinding for your components. Grind is the game it's like loading up mario and complaining you have to platform it's like loading up mario and complaining that you need to jump two obstacles to get to the princess it's a platformer that is the type of genre that is the game the descendant is a looter shooter it is a grindy game. This is what the genre is. It's kind of weird that you would complain about a grind in a grindy game. And passes and a whole slew of optional cosmetics that can only be unlocked with money. Did it really need to throw in? What and is not even that bad of a grind, grind, by the way. Version of Warframe's the grind is generous. System just to annoy me into paying more on top of that. Either way, trying to unlock a single character for free was an absolutely excruciating experience that made me feel a whole lot worse about the first descendant, despite mostly enjoying the actual gameplay. Do as I, I mean, you can also, if you feel really negative about grinding a character out because you don't want to grind three days to get a character out of the 14 plus characters that the game has, you can also just pay for it since the game is free.
to begin with. You can literally download the game for free and they're not charging you a single dime. You can look at as a purchase for the a new character as the purchase for the game as well. I'm just saying that if there is a problem, you have to understand that this game is available for free download. They are not charging you extra to do this, to do that. But if you do have a problem with the three-day grind or, or two-day grind of a new class, you can justify cutting a corner and buying a new class because the game is free. I'm just saying. The game is given to you all for free. Either way, trying to And you have the ability to grind it out for free. Everything in this game, by the way, can be obtained free in the game. If you put in the time, you could get everything in the game for free except the cosmetic stuff. Cosmetics is hidden or locked behind a paywall. But I mean, if you're really going to sit there and complain about a cosmetic that has no bearing or implications in, in the, the bigger picture of the game, if you're really going to complain about cosmetics, you're a loser. They're cosmetics, bro. Unlock a single character for free was an absolutely excruciating experience that made me feel a whole lot worse about the first Descendant, despite mostly enjoying the actual gameplay. Do as I say, if you want to live. Similarly, the weapons, equipment, and upgrades you earn while shotgunning your way through levels are awesome. Loot drops constantly, most weapons feel distinct and satisfying yeah. to play with, and watching All the weapons, numbers go yeah. up as you modify and upgrade every new toy in your arsenal makes the first Descendant hard to put down, until it forces you into about 15 separate menus to juggle dozens of materials and so many different systems that you might want to keep your inhaler at the ready. This kind of thing is pretty typical for looter shooters, granted, but even by the already gag-inducing standards of the genre, this one's particularly obnoxious to learn, especially since the tutorial robot who shows you the ropes in the social area um, explains things to you in a series of texts that pass by quickly enough to challenge your speed reading skills worse yet these brutally of two systems have likewise know, been given the same arbitrary barriers as weapons with various i'm a person that gets overwhelmed a lot by a lot of systems and stuff and i i admittedly did get a little overwhelmed with the first descendant initially but it didn't take too long for me to be like, okay, I get this system, I get this system. And I am a person that gets super overwhelmed. I couldn't even complete Monster Hunter 10 minutes of that game because I was super overwhelmed with everything they threw at me. I don't think that this is at that degree or that level. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just being biased right now, but I didn't, I didn't get super overwhelmed is currencies and components to craft that can be made a whole lot less annoying if you just pay the piper. The first descendant has all the building blocks of a fantastic looter shooter, but they're buried under a pile of monotonous quests, a terrible story, and an infuriating free-to-play model that has influenced its game design in the worst possible way. In its best moments, blasting aliens apart with both fireballs and a satisfying arsenal of weapons makes for a really good time, but at least an equal portion of my time was spent battling perplexing design decisions that okay. tested the limits of my abundant patience. Like its peers, future updates Updates could evolve I just this feel like to a much more consistent like this game doesn't this guy doesn't really like grindy games I feel which is really weird because he compared it to other grindy games it just seems like he doesn't really enjoy a grindy looter shooter and he feels really negative towards it which is really weird to me because I feel like other looter shooters have worse drop rates and a lot of these other looter shooters pioneered the microtransactions that this game has with the whole waiting excessive amount of time like in warframe you have to wait three days to get a warframe done like all of these things were pioneered by other games that, that this guy said that he, this game copy pasted from right so like he was just not really like the genre at all and i don't know i just feel like this is extremely biased and a lot of hate um for the game and un justified hate for the game this reviewer or this review video just seems like it had an agenda going into it it feels like he was forced to play this game and when somebody is forced to do something they are already entering something really negative with a negative headspace 
doesn't seem like he wanted to enjoy it. He doesn't seem like he wanted to care for the game. He came in with a biased agenda, a job, and he came in there. His boss said, hey, we have one hour, and I'm going to need a review for First Descendant. And he's like, oh, man, but I I'm really having fun playing World of Warcraft right now. Nope, work is ticking. Uh, you know, clock is ticking. And so he had to get off his favorite game and play this. It just feels like he did not take this very serious. I doubt that this man even completed the campaign. I, I doubt it. Instantly enjoyable way to spend time with friends. But for now, it misses the mark too often to make its grind feel worthwhile. For some recent live service alternatives, check out our yeah, review. Just, it just seems like a very forced review and forced to come up with something. Um, yeah, it's just really, really weird. But I mean, it is what it is. I don't think that the five review is too bad. Right. It could have been a three. Uh, I still don't agree with like 90 percent of his takes on this video itself. Uh, I know that my opinion might come across a little biased because I have been enjoying a lot of TFD. I have uh, consumed many, many hours of it, and I have never played any other games to compare it to either. But I'll leave you my review on the next video. Uh, so, yeah. If you guys like the video, comment, like, and subscribe, and check out the my future video of my review of The First Descendant. Uh, bye, YouTube. Hey, YouTube. Yeah, you. YouTube, you know that the success of this channel relies heavily on you. Viewers like you. By hitting the comment, like, and subscription button, you help me really, 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 really a bunch. More than you ever know. You could even put it on mute and walk away, you know, or lower the volume and walk away. But all the success of this channel relies on you. And I'm very thankful if you hit that comment, like, and subscription button. Also, follow my social medias. Twitter. My Twitter, I put out new art, new stuff. If you want to see more of this... Follow me everywhere, Twitch everywhere, everywhere. I give you my permission, my consent. Go, go. Now, um, hit the follow, comment, like, subscribe, Twitter, Twitch, everything. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching.